What up, y'all? Rap Critic here, and it's about that time to tally up the best rap songs of 2023. But just to be real with y'all, you know, even the best tracks have some flaws to them, so instead of shying away from it, this year, let's look at the best joints of the year that still had some odd moments here and there. Let's get started. The other day I was hanging out with one of my bitches. Leave it to the likes of Danny Brown and Peggy to make pretentious backpack rap with just the right amount of self-awareness about it. Stop scaring hoes. Play that shit out and touch their toes. We don't really hear that bitch. No Dropping a hook like that over experimental production like this as a reference to the meme of socially unaware backpackers who can't take the hint that nobody's trying to hear that lyrical miracle shit when you're trying to get girls in the mood. Mm, mm, oh, but wait, baby, you're not really paying attention to how he's flowing over the beat. I mean, that shit is crazy. But for real, it's a wild ride of a track where the two rappers ride a dizzyingly powerful hard jazz backbeat all about how it's absolutely not a smart financial decision to make the music they're making. Play something for the bitches. How the fuck you supposed to make money off this shit? You wanna be an MC? What the fuck you think it's the name? That said, it is a little disappointing that JPEG only does the hook and Danny's verse doesn't really tackle the topic as well as I would have preferred, but it is still fun enough and definitely is a blast of energy unlike anything else this year. Now what the shit? Well, as the last song said, I had to play something to make them touch their toes, so alright, here's the more conventional normie record for a list like this. A rap R&B record sampling a rap R&B song that you know you've heard sampled on another rap R&B song. That said, I appreciate how they actually breathe some new life into it though, starting with Bryson Tiller's intro jumping in with a flow of his own. It's that cool thing where it sounds like he's just talking in the intro, but the delivery spills things over into an unexpected little pocket of rhymes. And look, no disrespect to Ice Spice, but Lola sounds like the poke evolved version of her, once she's really had time to live in her deep, breathy New York accent for a while. And despite the subtle hints that the relationship might not exactly be healthy, the lyrics make you viscerally understand why she justifies it. Have me walking all crooked in my crops and shit. And the way her low but gruff voice cuts through the buttery music, it just makes the perfect contrast for those real bedroom bully vibes. Put it in my dog, nigga stabbing it. <laughs> well, geez, don't censor yourself now. I shoot it at assassinate, tongue doing magic tricks. Ooh, Lordy, I think I'm catching the vapors. Foot on neck, whoa. Hand on funnel, got them busting nuts before we leave the Holland Tunnel. <laughs> Well, goddamn. See, this is the type of song that makes you get why they put up with their bullshit in their relationship. Like the carnal reward of foot-on-neck level sex in a moving car. At least, uh, that's what these last lines seem to be implying. I, well, I, well, I hope they got like a chauffeur or something, because it can't be easy concentrating on the road while doing whatever weird sex wrestling moves they're into. Is this any way to behave? Mm. Okay, so we've seen all those mediocre SpongeBob voice AIs, right? Hi, hi, do you want to die? Cause I'm gonna take your soul back. These janky novelty songs where you can tell they just got the AI to do literally everything with no edits to it because the references just sound like a computer trying its best to rap about a TV show it can't watch. You get it? Mr. Krabs is gonna have sex with Plankton's wife, who's a computer, so, uh, ha ha ha. Yeah, this definitely sounds like it's written by a soulless machine that doesn't understand sex. Now see, that's not to say that the idea of doing a cartoon character's rap song is automatically bad. Sure, they're the modern equivalent of those old hood Looney Tunes shirts with Tweety Bird crossing his arms, but if it sounds like a human being that's actually making a song that knows the show, the references hit so much better because you can tell they're really playing with what you know about the character. And in that vein, I present Back on the Grill, the Cash Crabs anthem. Brand new bag for bro, but I didn't pay for it. I don't like spending that cash because I'm trying to save a Oh wow, a rap that actually sounds like they know something about the characteristics, like Mr. Krabs being a cheapskate, and not just generic gangster rap, but with random Spongebob references thrown in? Like, okay, it's a distract to Plankton about how he can't get his formula. Already we're working in the context of the show. It really has fun with the idea, making punchlines on Plankton that hit harder if you've watched the show. It truly does feel like a wrapped Spongebob episode. It's clever, leans into committing to the bit of the references, and honestly, it sounds so well put together, it really works well enough to function as a straight bopper outside the context of it being a joke record. Plus, the guys who made this actually did the voices themselves, so, you know, props for keeping that human touch in the age of crustaceous cheapskates who let AI do all the work for them. 
So Gorillaz is back in the house, sounding as melancholy and ethereal as ever. But with this joint, they switch things up even more by having the guest rapper flowing on an unconventional rhythm. Yo, a desolate city where it hurts to smile. Ran into the reverence, it's been a while. See, if you listen, the beat feels like it's in 4-4, but something feels like it's shifting under the beat, right? Especially when you get to this glassy eyed hook where you can really feel the big beats of what they're doing in the music. See, each measure actually has six beats in it before it repeats, but it's rhythmically subdivided in a way that makes it sound like a typical four count beat, but with two extra beats added. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a dope mix up in the groove that makes it interesting to hear the rapper flow over, with lyrics about people trying to have a good time amongst what clearly sounds like desolation and despair all around them. Now, he does lose a little bit of steam in his flow by the end of the verses. But the breakdown bit that it leads to makes up for it. And then, because it's in the air, of course this next part sounds exactly like an abstract song grappling with the eventual takeover of artificial intelligence. The track has this glittery but submerged funkiness to it. That plus the unconventional time signature switch ups remind me that Gorillaz is and will always be in their bag of foggy London town gloominess that still makes you booty shake. Mesopotamia out the motherfucking lion cage. So I love me some Aesop rock, but the fact remains his style of music definitely fits safely in the hip hop ho scaring category. The deep nasally flow and complex wordplay admittedly often makes him hard to get into from an outsider perspective. Revisit the Cobra loading zone. Uh, what? However, when he zeroes in on a specific topic that he's laying out in an interesting way, he always hooks me back in. And today's song is a perfect example a rap about technology. 2.5 million years ago, a friend of mine made a tool from a stone and a thing that describes technology. Sorry for the technique, sir. I like how he refers to the original man who made a stone spear like it's his friend, essentially making the point that we're all connected by the ideas and technological advancements of the past, standing on the shoulders of giants as we build our next innovative ideas on top of theirs. And I also like how he sets it up as an inevitability, that man will always be on the hunt for the more efficient way to get the things we want. There is an condition complication of a vision with the answer to build a more sophisticated widget, idiot, manipulate electricity, now but can I be done? Yes it can, ain't a damn that could cancel the flood. And then of course there's the hook. A reference to the phrase, cats out of the bag, about how once ideas and innovation get passed around, it's hard to go back to the less efficient way of doing things before. However, by the third verse, he starts getting into some inevitable drawbacks of unfettered innovation. Wait, it gets awful. If it's better, I'm really really. If it's energy, then come the hills for killing, then it will be. And I like how he doesn't take the Luddite stance of technology bad just because. He makes it clear it's about man's bloodlust and greedy intentions when using that technology. It's not about a better knife, it's chemistry and genocide. It's cameras in a paper corners, plastic in the wilderness. We cannot be trusted with the stuff that we come up with. The machinery for Jesus, we just really love our buttons. But of course, instead of considering moderation or regulations, we just distract ourselves with the next innovative tech that could have dangerous implications down the line. Some technology, focus on the other shit. Pretty printed body parts, dehydrated onion dip. And the less I say about the AI-generated elephant in the room, the better. It's a track that praises the intelligence of man while not letting it get away with the dumb ways we use that intelligence. And, like, typically it feels like you need a dictionary to keep up with dude, but when he's really just fleshing out a specific concept, his abilities really shine through. Plus, I, I just really dig this hook. So, I don't know, maybe Ace House music just hits better when the chorus is about a cat. I'm just saying, Ace, I know you're all underground legend status and everything, but look, if you get approached about doing the soundtrack single for a live-action Thundercats movie, at the very least, consider it. Oh, I can already hear the backpackers furiously typing their disapproval, forever putting Aesop Rock below these young upstarts. But look, I'm going by what joints I feel make the best rap songs. And as far as how a song comes together as a track, I couldn't deny just how fucking cool this joint is. It's rocking that nonchalant fuckboy energy, but it's so flowy and lackadaisical, I had to chuck it on here, just for the style and flair of their deliveries. Yeah, I'm feeling like a pimple, cause I'm finna pop my shit. If you ever took my hoe, it ain't no pressure by that bitch. And Pennywise inside my blunt, hit that shit and make it flow. I'm out of the way, I'm with your bitch, and she trying to drive the boat. And sure, at the end of each line, he perpetually sounds like a guy being pulled off stage by a vaudeville cane. Skinny nigga, fat 
racks, stand the fuck up out the way. But right before it starts getting old, the second MC Babytron comes in, completely flipping the flow. I won't wipe a bitch, I'm high as hell up on the rings of Saturn. Pop like his Wakanda, hit the hood, I gotta feed the panther. And this next line needs to be preempted by a trigger warning for lazy people over the age of 29. How you 30 with zero hustle? Like shit, we need some answers. Like, ooh, ooh, that shit cuts deep. I mean, if I was a lazy person over 30, I, I could imagine a line like that could really sting. So after years of listening to SoundCloud emo raps over somber guitar plucks, it's nice to hear some shit really ratchet up the rock rap combo. And in typical rap fashion, and of course they have to point out that they're doing the rock rap combo. And it's like, alright, it's just a bit of chugging guitar in the background, you know? Uh, this ain't exactly Eddie Martinez wailing on Run DMC's rock box, but, but okay, relative to today's sad boy rock rap, I'll take this energy any day. Plus, I like how they call out the low-key ways people divide music based on racial and musical lines. That's it, there are a couple weird parts. My children are rats so no cussing. Like, what? Weren't you just cursing? Also, because they're young and probably a ball of nerves and worries, uh, they frequently fall out of the tough guy rap shtick into weirdly personal diary shit. A lot of y'all critics just some gold niggas. How can I respect any OP? When I see you, you respect to some whole niggas. Like, oh shit, yeah, we're calling out the ass kissing yes men in the industry. Yo, there's a two man my guns with my sister at the dentist just to see if he could drain it out. Uh, oh, okay. I, so, sorry to hear that, I guess. I still gotta go back to get it taken out. I think he was saying something about root canals. What? Where are you going with this? Hopefully by the time you hear this is taken out. But anyway, it's more important shit to find about. I got a sister who got to stress my mama out. Oh, okay, so it's like low-key worries happening amongst his other bigger concerns kind of thing. And I still gotta hear the bullshit y'all talk about. Ah, and the whole time, that background info of his life is playing out while he's dealing with other people yammering his ear off about nonsense. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm, uh -huh, mm -hmm, okay. It sounds dumb, but I'ma let you do it anyway. You all had any to learn from falling out of your face. Like, in addition to fusing genres, it's also weaving their emotional journeys into their battle raps in a strange but inventive way. More money, more problems, but if that's the case, getting paid more notes than an opera house. What do you think I say about to save my mind and now? It's a little off kilter, but the energy's undeniable enough from one rapper to the next that it carries through for the whole track. Alright boys, clear out. It's time for the men to step up to the plate. They say I'm a, a modern day poet, but with a crooks feel. Say the balls are iron, fucking hook steel. This was an indie request someone put in the comments when I asked for best rap suggestions from the year, and man does it deliver. Just that first bar already kicks off with some clever wordplay, and since I couldn't find the friggin' lyrics anywhere because this is what you have to deal with the more underground the song is, it, damn it, I'm gonna interpret it how I want. Say the balls are iron, fucking hook steel. Cause like the way he says bars there, it could also be heard as balls, so it kind of works both ways in terms of describing balls of iron or his lyrical bars, which are as hard as physical bars in a prison. And then following it up with fucking hook steel, which works as saying that the choruses are just as hard, with his wordplay also taking advantage of just the imagery of a literal steel hook as a metaphor for the strength of the catchiness of them. And usually rappers just say that their hooks are good as a general brag, while most MCs don't really focus on hook writing too much, but, but this one's actually legit pretty good. The confidence that pulls through here as an elder statesman of MC and is just so tangible, and it resoundingly pushes back against the common misconception that rap is just a young man's game. Like, fuck that. If you got something to say and you can do it with some riz behind it, that's all that need apply. And they wear their age with pride. You can hear the experience in their voices that are still full of piss and vinegar. And you just feel young and fucking with hacks or Jim Duggan, a grown man who should have been something. So I got nothing to lose, nothing to prove. The only thing I would say is that there's like one or two bars where they over metaphor their rhymes. You know, like when someone hyperbolically over describes something to get their point across. And it can work sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't work. You bought as hard to me as a Cardi B Barbie in a car seat with the Charmin Bears. Like, I get it, for the sake of wordplay, but like, why is the Barbie specifically a Cardi B model of Barbie? Like, what, how, how does that add to the softness? I mean, is is this a diss to Cardi B? Are you saying she's soft? Cause I don't know, she does seem like she might cut a bitch. And while the very last guy on the track doesn't go as hard, the second MC definitely keeps things pushing with the witty punchlines. 
pull out your map. I heard you looking for a legend. I, I haven't looked at or needed a physical map in so long. I forgot that they had things called legends on them. So that, that one took me a second to get. That was a good one. Think this shit a game? I'm a draw whether I win or lose. It's typical. You are Olivia Newton if you get physical. How you make a move for going nowhere? You in the elliptical. Just dope bars on the menu for this track. The skills are undeniable, and the way they use the sample at the end of the hook is also pretty dope. <laughs> Man, I ain't gotta tell you who this is if you watch my stuff. I, I put him on this list at least twice by now. If they ain't seeing crap, they need fucking binoculars. Exactly my point! The views got me paid, I'm like a fucking optometrist. Look, man, I've been trying to tell you about this guy. The flow, the rhymes, the social commentary. This guy's an all-rounder who's got it in spades. We ain't mean to get here. Can't be mad when you arrive, cause look at who we let steer. You know, there comes a time when you're writing the best of list, and you're just like, what, what the fuck am I supposed to say about this? It's just fucking good shit. When they telling me I'm next, really I'm like next where? I might not even be aligned about the dreams they sell and try to project here. Professional try to make next year my best year. I don't know if I got more confidence or less fear. What? Don't look at me. I didn't have anything to say. It's just dope. Cut to the next lyric. The grooviest the flows would be hooking to a close. And he gonna see some flows and be a loose to how he flows. Multis on top of multis. Using complex rhyme schemes, but still phrased in a natural way that makes it all come out smooth. Why would you try to hate? You want them dudes who overuse the word IDA. Okay, well, I don't... I think I've ever heard anyone use the word ID8 in real life, but, but whatever, back to the bars. The Jersey game is so bad as it. If given the choice between the former and the latter, I use the former to climb the ladder way until the former's what the ladder is. You know what? You know what? No, I'm not gonna keep spoiling these dope bars, casting these pearls before swine. You go listen to this whole damn thing yourself. But if you still don't want to recognize skill, hey, that's okay, because dude's not here for the awards. As the song title indicates, there's one thing he's working towards. When you know more, you gotta say no more. When the best alive, I've never been so sharp. Fuck a accolade, bro. I'm here for the pension. You get her working for a cheer or a mansion. Shit gonna be exactly as appears at the exit. Yeah. yeah. Cause the end of the night is a cool man. Yeah. And I need my pension. I just have to humbly ask, why aren't more people listening to this guy? For fuck's sakes, somebody body switch Jack Harlow in this guy, please. That asshole always sounds like he's drowning under the weight of the cool samples that are actually responsible for his songs being hits anyway. No one will even fucking notice. I'm getting some jail like this. Jordan, is that you? Oh, that's right. You were expecting some sort of sad, serious social commentary shit to top this list, weren't you? Look, I, I just had to talk about AI and its harrowingly dark implications for humanity for like three songs in a row. Just let's end this with a good time, all right? And there's usually two things that top this list for me. The aforementioned soul-wrenching social commentary, or just a dope lyrical track that gets me fucking amped! Look, he off a pill, niggas ill. Is it even real? He got a glizzy with no bullets. Do he even kill? So Fendi to rap, but uh, but I guess the 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 or the or the duh is part of the first word. So so Fendi the rapper made a really fucking dope song. All that rah rah when I'm talking, they don't hit me though. Mm -hmm. Play this shit back, make them sit back, cause we in this home. Mm -hmm. But what truly raised the track to Olympian heights is Cardi B with the lyrical assist, replicating her maneuver on the put it on the floor again track by sideways repeating but updating the original rapper's verse. Bitches talking all that rah rah, I don't feel it though. Mm -hmm. Like the plan B didn't work, baby, I'm in this home. Seriously, it's like listening to an alternate universe of a verse. So like a multi-verse? Or, or multi-verse? Verse? A multi- Turn me up, I'm trying to fuck. Point me to the sluts. What? That nigga tough, he had a luck. Fuck him, gave him up. Fuck. She this bitch already, and she ready. Well, she trying to fuck. He think he handsome, this a ransom. We the line him up. She every line from the first verse is fine, but then when you hear how Cardi updates virtually every line, like yin to yang, it ultimately brings the listening experience together. Her pussy mook, and he a goofy. She got goofy pussy. Why? Cause she tastes good with no smell. She got a fruity pussy. What? My name is always in that mouth. I got that juicy pussy. She even makes the better hardcore sex song reverence. I can't wait, I'm trying to fat. Take me to the back. Wow, didn't need to be reminded of that song. Sure, it's her own song, but still, much better song reference. Oh shit, Cardi going too hard, calling out the T.I. controversy, chill, chill! And I'm ready with receipts, I be proving shit. Mm. shit. I blow 50 racks and target on some stupid shit. Mm. Wow, you know this woman don't give a fuck. She just said, that's right, I am willing to back my claims up with evidence. And then immediately followed that with, and yes, I do be balling out of control at bougie Walmart. I blow 50 racks and target on some stupid shit. Mm. 
How charmingly ghetto. And there you have it, the top 10 rap songs of 2023. Some brilliant, some goofy, all dope. But remember, even the best MCs can still catch a piece of this heat. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe and the bell because that's what helps the most. And if you want to support the show, of course, that's patreon.com slash rapcritic for joining the Discord, getting access to private streams, plus videos, music, and podcasts before anyone else gets access to them. As well as ko-fi.com slash rapcritic for one-time donations or if you want to make requests. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>